Greetings and welcome. We are the L. We are greatly appreciative of this opportunity to interact with you here today, this day of your time. Today's transmission is regarding how to deal with negative people. Dear ones, we love you so much. Many of you deliberately avoid being around various family members whom you have deemed to be negative and toxic to your well-being. It is our intention, dear beautiful children of Gaia, to offer to you an understanding of the difference between positive and negative people so that you may take this understanding and apply it to your daily life. This will be especially useful to those of you who live with a negative family member. Dearest ones, we love you so much. We ask of you now to do the following with us. We ask you to take your hands and place them in the Namaste pose and move them to your heart center. We ask you to take a deep breath into this heart center and feel the energy of your chest expanding outwards. We ask you to visualize your heart center energy expanding outward with each breath. Now, we ask you to relax and allow our conversation to continue. Dearest ones, your energy is always expanding outward, always. Every single experience is that of what you have sent outward from you. We repeat, from you. We understand that most humans do not want to fully embrace this concept because it means that all things positive, but especially all things that you perceive as negative, is a projection from your own beingness. Yes, dearest ones, we love you so much. This is true, that everything that you perceive as positive in the world or in a person around you is a reflection of something that you approve of in yourself. But it is also true that everything that you perceive as negative in the world or in a person around you is a reflection of something that you disapprove of in yourself. Dear ones, if you did not contain an aspect of what triggers you, then it would not trigger you. These triggers, whether they are from positive things or what you perceive as negative things, are all beautiful and glorious gifts made manifest so you can see, hear, or feel what you are not noticing within yourself. We are quite often asked how a person could forgive someone who has done something so horrible to someone else. Dearest ones, we love you so much. The reason 
why you find it hard to forgive someone else is because you have an aspect within yourself that you need to forgive. There will be some sort of condition within yourself that you believe is unforgivable. And dearest ones, we ask you to hear us now. The condition that is within yourself that you believe is unforgivable is usually something really small and minor according to your adult reasoning mind, so much so that you disregard it. But most of your limiting beliefs and habits formed while you were very young children. As such, your adult reasoning mind will disregard what you consider a silly and non-important limiting belief. But that child part within you is still holding on to it, and it is distorting your perceived reality all around you in your current adult life. As an example, it could be something as minor, according to your adult reasoning mind, as a circumstance that occurred as a child where you broke a glass and your parent scolded you and said you were a bad person. This statement from the parent was taken to heart by the young child and will now distort all interactions in their adult life unless they release what was told to them when they were young. Let us now look at a couple examples that might be occurring in your adult interactions in this your holiday season. Let us say you arrive at a family member's home for a dinner and there is a family member there who is always saying negative things or discussing how horrible their life is or is always criticizing you. Now, knowing that everything is a reflection of what is within you, what do you think is happening? First of all, let us state that if you did not have any aspects of these so-called negative discussion topics within you, then that person would somehow not even interact with you. The laws of the universe would somehow magically cause the two of you to dance around each other within the house and you would never even hear anything that person would be saying. Or even that person would have some sort of situation occur whereby they were unable to attend the family dinner. So, dear ones, if you are interacting with someone whom you perceive to be negative, it is because you have drawn it to you so you can see what is within you. That is such a beautiful gift. We know it may not seem like it at the time, but we encourage you to reflect upon this statement at a later time. What would we do if we were in your situation, dear ones? We would listen very closely to the perceived negative person and do our best to not get emotionally involved, but instead to treat the situation like a research experiment we would listen to the topics that person is discussing and also the words that person is using and also notice what words are an emotional trigger for us. We would take this information and 
at a later time when we are in a loving and peaceful state of mind, reflect upon these items and spend time looking within to see what thoughts, emotions, memories match to some extent. Dear ones, you will find a match to each and every single item within yourself. Is that family member always trying to tell you what you are doing wrong? Dear one, if you look within, you will see that you will have a tendency to tell others what they are doing wrong or an urge to tell others. You will have, you will notice, a resistance to allow someone to do something a different way than you do it. Is that family member always discussing their poor finances? Dear one, if you look within, you will see that you have a lack thought with respect to your current or potential finances. Is that family member always making fun of your spiritual lifestyle? Dear one, if you look within, you will see that you will have a tendency to judge other people's lifestyle choices. You will see that whatever it is that is bothersome to you, there is some sort of mirrored aspect within yourself. If you allow yourself, you will find this experience of looking for the matching aspects as a fun game because you will feel the immediate vibrational improvement once you find the aspect within. For one further example, what do you do if you are living with someone who you perceive as negative? Chances are you are already blaming the other person for your lower vibrational level because you have noticed the correlation between them being in the room and you feeling a low vibration and them not being in the room and you feeling a high vibration. Dear ones, you are very correct with the correlation between them in the room with you and your vibration. However, the aspect that is incorrect is the cause of the vibrational disharmony. Dear ones, we love you so much. We know there are a great many number of you living in a situation that it evidences for you extreme examples of disharmony. This is part of the ascension process. The vibrational evidence becomes more obvious the closer you get to an ascension energy level. The reason why the emotional pain of the vibrational disharmony is so extreme and severe is because you are naturally allowing yourself to be at a higher vibrational set point, but you are still choosing to hold on to behaviors, beliefs, and habits that cause you to pull yourself back down to a low vibration, which is painful both emotionally and physically. But what do you do when you are living with someone who you believe is the reason for your depression or the reason for the emotional distress within the house because of their words and their actions? Dearest ones, let us use our beloved channel as an example for you. We offer her example to you 
with her permission so that those of you who are living with a mate or with a child that is causing you emotional pain can look upon our channel's experience and apply it to your own life. Your family member might not always physically change locations, but your lifestyles might alter so that your physical interactions become minimized, such as you or your family member have a new job or activity that causes you to not be around each other very often. Dearest ones, we love you so much. Do you see that you are the writer and director of your life and you tell the ones around you what to say and do? Yes, they interpret the script and directions in their own way, but it is still essentially what you want them to do for you. This is the glorious gift you are always offering to each other. This is how you are all co-creating everything together. Your higher selves are always working together. And as these energies intensify, so too will the experiences around you in order to get your attention. You know the time remaining is running short and you know there are various aspects of your inner self that you want to release so you can show the human race what the ascension process is all about. Dearest ones, we ask you to look at those around you whom you have deemed as harmful to your emotional well-being and offer them a prayer in gratitude for the acting work they are doing for you and you look forward to recognizing the script you wrote for them to play out for you. We offer this one final thought for you. Imagine a beautiful rose. It is glorious. Now we ask you to imagine smelling the beautiful rose. It is glorious. Now we ask you to grasp the stem of the rose. You pierce your skin on the sharp thorns. Dear ones, what are you focused upon? Are you thinking about how beautiful and amazing the aroma is of the rose? Or are you thinking about that awful flower that hurt you? You see, dear ones, you have a choice as to how to perceive each and every single situation. Utilize this same process with your family members. We encourage you to focus upon their beauty and not upon their thorns. Walking the path of mastery is a path of looking within and recognizing that we create all around us. Walking the path of mastery is a path of thanking everyone for their part in helping you learn and grow. Walking the path of mastery is a path of recognizing that as we become more enlightened and evolve our level of consciousness, we have a responsibility to forgive and hold harmless all those who have not reached the same level of growth. We offer these words to you. 
Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. As we cannot become angry with a young child who is just learning to walk and knocks over and breaks a precious crystal vase, we cannot become angry with anyone in our life for they are just learning to evolve their consciousness. We ask you to see everyone as very young children. Love them as such. They will have an inability to control their behaviors and actions. But that is where you can choose to shine, dear ones. You can choose to shine and show them the way of light by controlling your reactions and behaviors. Guide them. Teach them. Show them. You are the masters of light, dear ones. We love you so much. The emotional pain from your family members is because you are ready to embrace and walk the path of mastery. Let go of your taught reactions. Let go of your taught behaviors. Let go of your taught responses. Allow yourself to be guided to a new way of being a way of forgiveness, a way of love, a way of light. We leave you now in the love and the light of the one infinite creator, Adonai. <laughs>